Thank you. So what is technical communication? It's explaining hard things to humans. And I'm going to sort of break down the pieces of that. So hard things, what does that mean? It means things that take a lot of specific technical knowledge. Um, it's, it's things broadly that are unrelated to human intuition. You know, like if, if you talk to somebody and you say, oh, I think that guy's mad at me because I took his job. Like that's a very intuitive statement to make. And you don't really have to have a particular background it, to really understand that, except that you're a human being. But if you say something like, oh, this MySQL query is not returning the results I expect. Unless you have very specific technical knowledge, you have no idea what somebody's talking about. And you, you basically can't contribute. So that's a hard thing. That's, that's technical knowledge. Now, you might need to explain why this MySQL query is failing. And that's what we're going to get into. What does explain actually mean? It means that you convey a piece of knowledge you have effectively enough that it achieves a specific goal for the communication. So if you've got a coworker and this guy needs to help you, you know, unmangle your database, the goal might be perfect understanding that you guys actually share the same technical knowledge. But more often for a client or a non-technical person, a stakeholder, the goal might just be sort of a general intuition that lets them make a decision, you know. Okay, given what you've told me about the technical layout of the project, does your budget make sense to me? For example, they don't need to know everything that you know about how you're going to approach the project. They just need to be able to make a decision. So that's what explaining means. Who are humans? Well, <laughs> you may know some humans. Uh, and if you are human and know humans, you'll know that we are uh, not perfectly rational. Um, we have pretty limited cognitive capacity. We're very different in the way we learn. We're very different in the things we're, we're good at and not as good at. Uh, we're emotional. You know, We don't like being talked down to. We don't like feeling silly. If nobody else has a question, we kind of don't want to be the first person to ask. right? All these things. And not only are you trying to explain hard things to humans, but you yourself are human. So we have a real problem. So, um, And then, why does uh, technical communication matter? Why does it matter to uh, be able to communicate technical knowledge? Well, because you have goals. So here are some examples, right? My cousin says he can build this site with Yahoo's free site builder. Explain to me why that's bad in language that I can understand. I mean, that could be the difference between getting and not getting a client, right? WordPress sounds great for this project, but I heard that it's very easy to hack. Uh, that's what my boss thinks. Can you convince my boss that WordPress is the right tool for this thing? Or let's say you're not you know, doing client work. Maybe you built a commercial plugin that you're trying to sell. And you're turning people off with like opaque documentation. And they want a refund. Or they're just flooding your support for them. So you have to be able to, to, to um, communicate with people. Or you're going to really run into to, to serious problems. So here's the uh, analogy we're going to be using for this um, kind of throughout. If you have technical knowledge, let's say you're a WordPress developer. And I actually meant to do this earlier. Just who am I talking to? Are you guys largely developers? Let's have a hands for developers. OK, about half, mm, two thirds. Um, designers, most of the rest. OK, like power users, cool. And just interested in sort of learning about WordPress or something else. OK, awesome, great. So largely developers and, and designers, OK. So if you have technical knowledge, um, the analogy we're going to use is that you're at the top of a hill. You're on a hill. Here's the hill. Well, here. Here's just the picture. Now we're going to now we're going to sort of uh, annotate the picture. You are at the top of the hill. You can see a view because you took the trouble to climb the hill. Uh, there's the hill itself. Um, and then most people sort of are in a valley relative to the technical knowledge you have. There's the valley, and there are the valley people. Uh, this is actually great for LA. Um, <laughs> cool. So um, the hill and you, right? It took you a lot of hard work to get up this hill. Um, and the reason you climbed the hill is because you know that there's an amazing view at the top. Once you're at the top of the hill, you can see and do all kinds of really incredible stuff. Maybe you can predict the weather because you can see cloud patterns forming way, way far away. Nobody in the valley can see that stuff. You're really passionate about the stuff you can do at the top of this hill. That's why you climbed it. Now, what's up with, with the, what is up with the valley people? <laughs> what's the deal? All right. Um, so the valley, sorry, the valley is a fine place to be. It's the default place to be. And obviously, we're all in the valley relative to whatever, quantum physics or, you know, for me, like cars or bikes even. Um, I think I get skateboards. But um, so there's nothing wrong with being at, in the valley. But the issue is that sometimes you need information from the top of the hill. You need that information. And um, that means that somebody needs to give you either instructions for getting up the hill yourself 
or more commonly, just a report from the hilltop that you can actually understand. So there's nothing wrong with being in the, in the valley, but sometimes you need that view that the people at the hilltop have. Now, what's the challenge? Why is it hard to communicate from the hilltop to the valley? Obviously, the, the, the problem is gaps in knowledge. And what I want to point out is that it's not just that you know I know 20 things about databases, and this person only knows three, so I just have to fill them in on the other 17. There's actually entire contexts of knowledge that people don't remotely have. So I cooked up a little example here. Um, our, our hill person thinks that global warming is happening. And his evidence is the permafrost is thinning on the peaks of the mountain range to the west of us. The valley person's only ever been in the valley. What is permafrost? What are peaks? And what is a mountain range? So that's the kind of problem we have, right? So what is the result when you try to communicate these huge sort of context across these huge contextual gaps as a, as a technical person? Well, I'm going to talk about what kind of uh, negative sort of things spin off of that. And broadly, I, I sort of call them attitude problems. And there's, there's two major ones that I'm going to talk about. First one is arrogance. What does that mean? It means I am only really interested in talking to you if you're at the top of this hill with me. Everybody else, you know, I can't be bothered. So what does that look like? I mean, this should be familiar to everybody. Maybe raise your hand if not. But technical people are, you know, curt. They're sort of standoffish. You ask them a question, you sort of wince as you do it. You know, they're put upon. They don't really want to talk to you. you know? They will not simplify their knowledge into terms that you understand. They just refuse to do it. You ask, what does that mean? And they just repeat the thing they already said it, with all the technical language it comes with. They'll sort of accuse you of not knowing stuff when the whole point is that you're trying to learn what they know. Um, they make you feel like an imposter. They make you feel like you, don't, you shouldn't be doing your job. You know? You're not really a developer if you, you know, aren't running varying vagrant vagrants or something like that. You know? um, and uh, they might not actually care whether you understand them or not, because they know they're right. And you know, if you can get on their level, that's awesome. But if not, I mean, the view is not going to change whether you can get up the hill or not. Right? So hopefully, this is, this is familiar to everybody. I hope that everybody isn't doing this to all their friends and family all the time. But, um, I just actually, like this was a, um, a presentation that, that happened at LoopConf, and I was live streaming it. And like this slide hit me so hard that I actually just screenshot it and I keep using it. This, this idea of like a rock star, like a tech rock star, somebody who's like just way too cool and who likes to work in silos because nobody understands what they're, what they're talking about. And that's the way they like it, right? That's, that's, that's arrogance. That's the arrogance of technical people that, you know, that, that, that technical people can fall in. So where does this arrogance come from? Well, it can come from just, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I had a, whatever, a hard childhood or whatever, right? But that's not usually the story. It's actually because we love clarity, right? We love um, being able to understand complex problems and do really, really cool things with this knowledge that we've worked hard to acquire. And then we're talking to people who, you know, don't have the foggiest idea what we do and what we know, and yet they need all this stuff from us. And it, it can feel like the people themselves are an obstacle. You know? why, would you, why would you break your back trying to explain this stuff that it took you a lot of sweat and tears to understand, and they're not going to sort of get it anyway? They're the problem. I mean, there's you, and there's the awesome stuff you know, and then the thing that's messing everything up is this other person who needs to know it. Right? So that's where arrogance comes from. Let's talk about breeziness, which is the other sort of big attitude issue that I think people run into. Breeziness is basically pretending that these gaps in knowledge don't exist. It's so easy to get up this hill. I presume you're up here already. Let's discuss the view up here in extreme detail. right? What does this look like? You're overloading other people's ability to learn. right? They ask you a question, and they get back a fire hose of very technical information, and they're just like, ah, and you just you keep going. right? Explanations with too much tacit knowledge. So maybe you're explaining something very patiently and clearly, but there's things that people don't know that are prior to the thing you're explaining that you haven't bothered to fill them in on. Right? Another way to say this is you, you sort of skip the basics. Maybe you go over people's heads. You're explaining one tiny piece of, of a problem very patiently, but you know, hey, well, this, this database query, you know, I think the syntax is wrong on the front, you know, the front, and it's like database query syntax, right? OK. And then um, there's this urge that if you just tell people how easy your knowledge is to you, they will magically have it. <laughs> this is, look, this is, just, this is just me writing a plugin that registers a short code, and, right? 
So it's enthusiasm as an impediment to communication. It would be so great if everybody knew all the stuff you know. You could talk to everybody, and that trips you up. That makes you unable to communicate. It's sort of a, it's kind of idealism in the, in the negative sense. So where does this come from? It's, it, once again, we love the hilltop, right? It's so cool, all the stuff we can see. And to us, it's right there. I mean, just look, and there it is, right? I, how, could no, how could it be that other people don't have, don't have the same view we do, right? This is only true if you're on the hilltop, obviously. So in both cases, arrogance and breeziness, the problem is being blinded by the view, right? It's so cool. It's so cool what we know. And if, if other things get in the way of that, it's a threat, right? Your knowledge is so important to you that you can't really communicate with people who, who need elements of that knowledge, because you prioritize the knowledge over the people, broadly. OK, let's talk about um, how to actually communicate uh, once you've sort of purged arrogance and breeziness from your system and the way you communicate to others, uh, I think there's two things that you really have to do to actually, um, to actually get your message across. You have to be audience aware and you have to be strategic. So we'll talk through each of those. Audience aware, that means you always start where your audience is. If your audience is right at the base of the valley, that's where you start. So you need to reason, you need to take a formal process of reasoning carefully and without bias, meaning without what you wish people knew, uh, about actually what is the extent of other people's knowledge. They may not know the difference between you know, PHP and JavaScript. And if that's where you need to start, you need to sort of accept that as reality, right? So your communication has to reflect um, your understanding of the knowledge of, of the people you're communicating with. And it also has to respect those differences in knowledge. You, know, you, you have to be respectful of, of what people don't know. You can't. Um, you can't treat it like, uh, like they've done something wrong, because of course they haven't. They're just not, they just don't have your job. Or they do have your job, but they're not yet as good at it as you are. So what does that mean concretely? How do we, how do we communicate technical knowledge in an audience-aware way? Well, I think one really helpful thing is to use analogies. Analogies take very technical knowledge, and they make it kind of um, understandable, right? So they, they phrase your understanding in terms of understanding that your audience already has. It's, it's one of the, I think, most amazing ways to communicate technical knowledge. So let's take this question. How does WordPress work? And let's pretend that the person asking us is somebody who doesn't know anything about CMSs and you know, is thinking about maybe us building them a personal site or something like that. So I will read both of these. Look, WordPress stores posts and other data in its MySQL database. Then it uses a PHP code base compiled from WordPress's core functionality, as well as custom-built themes and optionally third-party plugins to dynamically render that data. OK, you're welcome. <laughs> that would be $6,000. All right, you can think of WordPress as being like a factory that builds web pages. OK, we store things uh, called posts. They're kind of like your raw materials, and they're going to live in the warehouse, right? That warehouse is called your database. Now, we're going to have to take those raw materials, and we're going to have to process them into a final product. That's our factory. And that, that processing is all done by something called PHP. And inside that factory, inside that, all that PHP code we're doing, we have our, our WordPress theme, which you can think of as being the assembly line that the raw materials travel down. And some pages go down one branch of that assembly line, and some, some posts go down one branch of that assembly line, and they, they turn out looking one way, and some go down another line and they turn out looking another way. That's why your home page might look different from, let's say, uh, you know, a page that um, shows all the posts that were written in September. Um, and then we've even got outside contractors who can add cool new stuff to the, to the factory but don't actually live in the factory. And we call those WordPress plugins. So the, the whole point of WordPress is that you can save um, all the stuff you write over in this warehouse, and then WordPress itself is just like a factory that makes that look like a beautiful web page at the, at the, um, for, the, for the end user. So actually, that was a little verbose. I, I'd try to trim that down. But anyway, hopefully, it's a little more intuitive than, than, than option one, right? Another thing you can do um, is to actually be really clear about surfacing the knowledge that somebody needs to engage with a particular topic, like list your dependencies, right? Tacit knowledge, meaning things I just assume you know, is basically how you become breezy, right? You, you just assume people know stuff, right? So if we're talking about the hill, how far up the hill are we starting? Are we starting all the way at the bottom, or are we starting some way up it? If we're starting some way up the hill, why is that? And what would I have to do to get, to get the basics 
um, to get up to where we're actually starting here. So I, I, I uh, wrote out an example um, that uh, Grunt, which is a piece of software that I personally am somewhat terrified of. Uh, this is literally the getting started section of Grunt's documentation. Um, I won't read the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> but basically, it, 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 it um, requires so much knowledge of, so much knowledge of and comfort with the command line. And if I was going to use Grunt, so I'm a Windows sort of like peasant. Um, and uh, so the command line is kind of weird on Windows. You can't really sudo, you can't sudo or sudo stuff. And it's weird. And it's, it, you get it open by um, the CMD thing. And, and on top of that, I'm a very good developer, but I just don't use command line tools that often. I would love to use Grunt to, to compile my SAS when I'm doing front end development. But they're basically telling me that this is not for me, because they're using they, they make absolutely no effort to be like, oh, like, are you new to the command line? And you know, are you not on a Linux-like system? Well, you know, here, like, we don't have to explain this to you, but like, maybe here's just links to one or two tutorials that can sort of get you, get you up to where you need to be to, to actually install Grunt. So this kind of thing just sort of tells me, like, OK, well, presumably, I guess this just isn't for me. You know what I mean? And that's, that's sort of that's what tacit knowledge does if you don't surface it. So those are, those are two strategies for being audience aware, right? One is use analogies, because you can basically translate your knowledge into knowledge other people have. The other is that you just tell people, like, I can't really explain this without you understanding this. And here's a great place where you can learn it, as opposed to just launching into it and hoping that they're already on the page you're on. OK, now what does it mean to communicate strategically? Basically, you should be communicating your technical knowledge with a specific goal in mind. And every piece of communication that, that you send out should essentially relate to that goal. So if this is a, partic uh, a potential client we're talking to, the client only needs to know what they need to know um, to make a good, well-informed decision about you know, whether you're the agency for them and whether your proposed path through the project works for them. right? They don't really need to know anything else unless they ask to. And one of the problems, I think, is that um, we can sort of lose sight of why are we even having this conversation? Because somebody asks a question, and to explain the answer, we have to explain 20 other things. Why, why are you asking the question? Right? So once again, a, client, a potential client is asking us, what is WordPress? This first thing is, I believe, the Wikipedia entry for WordPress. WordPress is a free and open source content management system based on PHP and MySQL. Features include a plugin architecture and a template system. OK, well, strategically, we know this is a potential client. Look, WordPress makes it really easy for you to use your website. It, it makes it a lot quicker and easier also for us to build your site because of things like themes and plugins that do a lot of the work for us. If you want to know the details, we'd be happy to explain more. You know, I mean, that I can make a decision. Oh, good. It's easy for you to build my website. That probably saves me some money. It's, uh, it's easy for me to use my website. That means I don't have to call you at you know, 2 in the morning on a Saturday. Awesome. That sounds great. So uh, I've actually done a, this has sort of been maybe largely about spoken communication at this point. So um, I've pulled out some snippets of technical writing. And thinking strategically can do incredible things for your technical writing. Because you basically filter all of the sentences you write through, why am I writing this? So I took this example. Bas this is, these are all sort of real examples that I've kind of edited with strategy in mind. Basically, a conditional tag is just a function that. A conditional tag is a function that, right? Number one is not strategic. Why are you making this sound so easy? I already know it's easy to you, right? There, there's no point in, in, um, in sounding so comfortable. You're just sort of wasting words, right? This is sort of the same thing. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. Basically, we just do the style sheet and queuing as normal. But we've wrapped it in a simple if statement. Look, here we enqueue our style sheets the way we, the way we described previously. But this time, we've wrapped the in queue commands in an if statement. The first one, it's like, I think it's lost sight of why you're communicating this to me. You know? And the evidence for that is that there's like four ways that I feel kind of stupid if I don't already understand in number one. And there's zero ways in number two. Right? Uh, this is from like, the WordPress software itself. Success, WordPress has been installed. Were you expecting more steps? Sorry to disappoint. All right. Success, WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. Right? Number one, 
thinks that it was so easy for you to install WordPress that it's actually kind of a sick joke, <laughs> right? And as somebody who had to learn how to install WordPress kind of the hard way, that is not true. I mean, it might be true now, but still, why? Like, it's, it's 8.30 in the morning on a Monday, and the client wants a site by noon, and I'm hungover, and you're being snarky. It's not strategic. OK, so thinking strategically can really improve your technical writing. So just to sort of summarize the, the kind of like two dichotomies we've talked about here, technical communication should not be arrogant. That means it should not um, treat the lack of other people's knowledge as an inconvenience or as something to, um, something to denigrate. And it shouldn't be breezy, meaning it, sh it should not treat those gaps in knowledge as just non-existent. It should obviously accept and respect that there's, there's going to be work here. And the way you do that work is you remember who your audience is and you remember exactly what they know. And you remember exactly why you're communicating with people. And you tailor all your communication to the purpose of of the communication itself. You, you, who is my audience and what is the purpose of this, of this communication? And, and everything that sort of um, that leaves your brain should be marked by, by those two qualities. And then the last thing I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit is just sort of a little more on the emotional side. Uh, just a note on empathy. You can actually do all this correctly and still not be very nice. And um, that is maybe OK, but it is true that tense people um, have a harder time learning, you know. And so um, let's. So I, I know people in my life who are actually excellent at communicating technical topics, but I wince every time I ask them. Not because they're going to snow me over with a bunch of terms I don't understand, but just because they kind of make me feel bad, just in this sort of vague, diffuse way, while they're actually really effectively communicating what they know, right? So what can we do about that? How to have empathy in two simple hacks. I try to make this sort of clickbaity. Um, OK, so these are two things that I think is worth trying, OK? Um, uh, you won't believe this one simple trick for relating to humans. <laughs> yeah, this was developed by a mom. Um, OK, <laughs> so the first thing to do is when somebody asks you for, uh, for technical knowledge, try manually I guess physically, not manually, but <laughs> try physically smiling as you answer. And just sort of see what, what that changes about the interaction. Obviously, don't do this every time, but just like try it like five times, you know? Go, you're kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. No, okay. OK, yeah, so try it. Try smiling as you talk. Somebody's like, you know, oh, it's just a, it's a white screen, and I, I thought we fixed this, and you know, what is this? All these white screens, and you go, Sounds like a PHP error. And just sort of see what that changes, right? And then, obviously, for writing, um, try putting a smiley face after every paragraph you write. And then scan and see if it looks sarcastic. And anything it does, reword. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, yes, this is basically what I told you on Wednesday, the last time we met, smiley face. And then you read it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, we be, how could you do this? Oh, we, we may have talked about this. I think it's that same issue with the plugin. I don't know. Smiley face. Eh, that's maybe decent. Who knows? But anyway, try it. Just try these things. It's fun. OK. <laughs> Empathy acquired. All right, so, <laughs> so basically, um, the, the, the idea is that the, the hill people and the valley people need each other and that they can, they can live a sort of a happy, mutually productive life. Uh, and if you happen to be a Hill person, which I think most of you are uh, in WordPress, um, it's, it can be really fun to actually sort of describe the view in terms that other people can understand. And, and it can really be one of the, the real privileges of, uh, of this kind of work. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. I just want to say a bit more about us and what we do. Uh, first, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, I want to mention our sponsors. Um, they're friends of WP Shout. Uh, SiteGround, who is really wonderful. InMotion, who is really, really wonderful. And uh, ServeMask, which is a plugin company that, that does a plugin called All in One WP Migration, that it's what I personally use anytime I need to migrate a site because it really is like something like three clicks and it works almost every time. So um, those three 
corporations are fantastic. And if you have any need of, of hosting, SiteGround and InMotion are really stellar, stellar hosting, especially for WordPress. And uh, please check out all-in-one uh, WP migration for, uh, for site migration. It's free, only the extensions cost money. So you're, you're welcome to try it out. Then uh, we're WP Shout, and one thing I want to let clue everybody in on is that we put out uh, an ebook package uh, that basically um, covers all the principles of, of uh, WordPress development, the sort of fundamentals of WordPress development. And please come see our booth if you'd like to learn more. We, we, we're running a, um, an opportunity uh, for one person to sort of get the deluxe version of the package free, and we're also extending um, a discount on every piece of the package. Um, to anybody who kind of tweets at us this weekend. Um, and actually, there's a, there's a sort of um, pretty sweet deal with InMotion that ties into that. So please find us, um, find our booth. And uh, also, um, this is the, the review link for this presentation. So thank you guys so much. OK. Yeah. Yeah. What's your advice for finding out what people don't know? That's a really good question. Um, and she said, sometimes I don't know what people don't know. You know, I, I think that um, I think that if you don't, if if we're talking about, for example, clients here, okay, we're talking about clients. Like you can pretty safely assume that clients have very little idea how how web technology works at all. You know what I mean? Like the difference between, you know. A website and a web page, they might not know. You know, they might use the. What a domain is and hosting. Yeah, or a domain and hosting. I mean, that's yeah. So it, I think with clients, you're safe assuming that you're going to need to make all of the distinctions. Basically, you know, like I'll, I'll always tell clients, like, okay, and as part of this project, you know, um, you're going to need hosting, which is like a place where your site lives on the internet, and you're going to need a domain name, which is basically its address. You know what I mean? You're going to need both those things. A domain name is very, very cheap. Um, and then hosting, you know, can vary depending on your needs. You know, and 80% of the time they're like, oh, you know, okay, I'll budget for that, right? Because they don't need either thing if they've got a WordPress.com install, right? So, you know, I would just say with clients, I mean, anything you can imagine, it's likely that they don't know because they're not they're not in web they're not in web tech, right? I hope that's helpful. I don't know specifically how you poke at people, but with clients, it's just like they don't, yeah. You can assume that they know very little. Yeah. Um, just to that um, note, I typically will say to them, you know, forgive me if I'm repeating if you already know this or if it sounds real, and then they'll, they'll usually say, no, I don't know anything more. Yeah, I'm about this. You know? Yeah. The age where it's what they know, so you don't sound condescending. Yeah. Be transparent about it. I'm not trying to be condescending if you already know this. That's a really good point. She said, you know, in sort of doing that, do you already know this kind of thing? You can say, hey, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, I'm just checking, you know, are you aware of that? And it, it sort of, it makes sure that you don't sound condescending as you're, as you're doing that, as you're doing that investigation. Yeah. A couple of things. First of all, um, you know, I've got plugins like from Code Canyon and I've looked at the documentation and the documentation is limited to a screener broadcast of yeah. And I'm hearing impaired. So if you do a screener video, especially if English isn't your primary language, I have no idea. And there's no other documentation that I can just read. Yeah. And a lot of the documentation is so technical that my feeling is if I knew what you were talking about, I would create the right. plugin myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. If I knew that much code, I would make it myself. But I don't know that much code. That's why I'm buying your plugin. Right. Well said. <laughs> make it easy. Help me understand how to make this work. Yeah. Yeah, so she said a couple things. One is just accessibility issues, which I, I think there's been at least one talk here about accessibility. But she mentioned that sometimes the only way that you can get documentation is in some sort of like how-to video. And in her case, she has hearing impairment. And so she can't access that. And 
Uh, there's, there's no other way to do it. And just speaking for myself, I don't want to watch your 11-minute theme tutorial video. You know, <laughs> like there's a different kind of accessibility issue with me, which is like I'm not going to watch this. So I, I think sort of um, being sensitive to that is, is really in, in a bunch of different ways. Maybe people want to absorb things different ways, and I think it's really good to think about that. And then the other thing she said was that sometimes documentation is so technical that it's like if I already understood this, I would write the I would write the thing myself, and I definitely sympathize. Yeah. Um, so I work for a, a hosting company, and we do a lot of support work, right? And so we haven't, your site really touched on a support position. With so many tickets coming in, do you have any advice that would kind of cover um, doing that role? I know myself in replying to you, you have people that are up on the hill with you that are asking support questions yeah. from other developers. So what? What advice would you have for people that are in those types of jobs? The question is sort of what advice do I have for support people? And was the specific question, what's my advice for interacting with developers as a support person or just uh, with anybody? People that open up the ticket mm. and you know, I found myself sometimes getting breezy or aggressive, you know, because yeah. you're kind of going against it, you're like two, you know, um, rams that are kind of butting heads because they're both technically You're both tech people and you're trying to impress each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you're, you're trying to be like, no, this is how you use our platform. Yeah. You're stupid. Or, right. you know, they're like, well, I know how to do this. But so. Uh, yeah. Um, I know about that. Let me think. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you've got two technical people who are trying to sort of impress each other. I mean, I guess the only thing I'll say is that like knowledge in tech is social currency. You know what I mean? And uh, it's scary to not know. It's like being a pilot who can't fly. You know what I mean? I don't know how to fly a plane. Like, so um, yeah, there's just sort of like just questions about ego that kind of come into that. And um, I think if you can make people feel like they're doing a good job in general, you know, in whatever way that means to you, you know, like, oh, cool, like, you managed to get the plug installed? That's, well, that sounds really condescending. Ah, uh, I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. Okay, who else, have, who else has a question? I don't know, sorry. I, I really think um, if it is that people are scared to admit what they don't understand, just really trying to, like, be a really nice person to them. Okay. You know what I mean? It, 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 yeah, it, like empathy, just like sort of like helping them lower their guard, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know specifically how to advise to do that, but that's my general feeling. Yeah, yeah. Just if 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 somebody's being nice to me, and if I don't feel, you know, then I can admit that I don't understand how stuff works. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it, it seems that um, do people really know the value of of, 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 ta of taking your advice in this uh, what's going on here? And I also see there aren't as many people here as there are the other ones. Too. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're, we're cool in here. We want to learn about feelings. I just want to learn about WordPress. Um, uh, the question was, like, are there any studies that, that talk about the importance of clear communication? I mean, it, yeah, broadly. I mean, it's very important that you be able to communicate knowledge. Uh, for example, I've lost or not lost client relationships based on my ability to um, give people enough ground to stand on that they felt like the project was in control. I mean, that, I'm constantly managing that in my work with clients. Is like, you don't understand everything that's going on, but let me give you enough that you at least understand that the project is in control. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, if I stop being able to do that, I would lose all of my client projects without yeah, question. It's very anecdotal, though. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't have any numbers for you, absolutely. Yeah. I, just, people, I, I just, I think what you're saying is, is very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that, what she said is that people who kind of don't do this well don't know how to do it or don't think it's important or both. And I, I think that one thing I would love to just convey is why this is important. I mean, you, some, some people may never have thought that like 
oh, I can just write people off if they don't understand this stuff because I'm an engineer. I'm, my job is not, you know, I'm not tech support. I'm an engineer, you know. And why is that not the case? You know, it's because people need this knowledge. You know, yeah. how how are we doing on time? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes. So one of the most important things in presentations is trust and rapport when you're going to be asking for money. Mm. So if you lose that trust and rapport, it goes to sale. Like, yeah, yeah. She said. Maintain that. Trust or rapport is like, if you're going to be asking for money, you basically can't do that without some, some trust between you and the person who's going to be paying you. Absolutely. I mean, right? Why would I pay you money? I don't trust you. OK. Does anybody have any just like, well, that was, yeah. Does anybody have any just comments they want to throw out just about this? Yeah, so, yeah please, please. I see also the opposite, you know, like people say, oh, this is too simple for you. You can do it like in three quick and when it's actually complex and mm -hmm. took time for, to learn that and everything. You know, how, so how do you handle that when they want to simplify something that is not? Yeah, he said, I've seen people saying, this is so simple when in fact it's complex. I'm generally calling that in the presentation that no longer exists, breeziness. Um, people trying to wish away the gaps, the gaps in your knowledge, you know. So how do you handle that with clients? Oh, you're talking about clients saying like, hey, isn't this just you install a theme and then you just configure the theme? There's only two steps. <laughs> the theme costs $40, so I presume this will total to $80. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, does it integrate with my Prius? Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, you just have to really set expectations. You, you have to, it, it, people are coming from the right place when they ask that question. And you have to sort of say, like I use it, and I did this like a week ago. He said, well, isn't this just setting up a theme? And I said, yeah, but you know, setting up a theme is kind of like maybe painting a room. I mean, there's the four walls, right? And you're just going to cover the four walls with paint, right? But at the end of the day, when you paint a room, you've spent all day on it. You know, you had to lay down the tape so that you didn't put it on the molding. And then you dropped some paint on the carpet. And you got to clean that up. And that means you have to go to Home Depot you know, and buy whatever. You know what I mean? By, by the end of the day, you've spent all day on it. It's a very simple thing, but you just spent all day on it. And, and that's how like, even a simple site deployment is. I mean, so I, think, I love analogies, as I, as I already said. And that might help. Yeah. One of, one of the uh, sayings I've heard that I thought was good is the meaning of communication is the response you get. Hmm. So if you, you think you're, you've told them something and then they come back with something that makes you realize that, 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 that they don't get it, yeah. then you need to realize that you didn't communicate. That's right. So he said, a saying he knows is the meaning of communication is the response you get, right? If you think you've communicated something super awesomely and then the person is still confused, you have failed. So it, it just means the proof is in the pudding, right? You can't dictate that your communication was so great, but the other person just wasn't communicated to. The whole point of communication is that a transfer has to happen. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. OK, I think we're done. Thank you, guys. Yeah.